tonight again to talk to you about what we are doing in Nigeria. Take it back. And I have today the person that me and him are always having conversation about how to move this Nigeria forward. And as they are putting it for backward, we are moving it back forward, they are putting it backward. And this Shemkuti, last time we had a conversation about Nigeria, a lot of people asked me to bring you back so so that we can take it back together but you've been away for almost three months what's been happening to you tell our people well pressy pressy to be <laughs> <laughs> i've been working you know I, i've been on tour uh, for like three months uh so yeah we just got back like a few days ago actually and um, yeah that's why i've not been around really yeah. so people haven't heard from you in a while you know this political season typically you know You'll be out there. And when I'm around, when I'm around, I don't like throwing stones when I'm in Europe or America. So Why? people will say, oh, because it's in Europe. Mm -hmm. You prefer when you're at home. When I'm around, <laughs> you know, would you love or what? Okay. Let me to see ourselves. And <laughs> so, so when I'm away also, it gives me time to actually have enough material. You know, a lot of things happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a week, every week a new drama. Mm -hmm. But, you know, where did you go this time around? I was a European tour. Yeah, well, uh, everywhere in Europe, and we did, uh, but we also went to Asia. You to said three, Japan? Yeah, three nights at the Blue Note in wow. Tokyo. You know, one, one thing people always ask, you know, when you travel out, come back, how do you feel about, you know, travel, things are a little easier for you. And you come back, and it's no, chaos. I, no, I think for me, it's, uh, we've been... How does it make you feel? Nigeria is so chaotic. It follows us anywhere we go. Hmm. So even though so you I'm take in America, a part of it with you. you know, I take my chaos, <laughs> <laughs> I take my chaos with me on tour, you know, just so that I don't come back and feel, you know, out of sorts. Mm -hmm. You know, but the whole world is just a different. You have to just balance. I think everywhere in the world is chaotic today. Yes, um, we do not give ourselves enough credit, actually, as black people, motherland people in Nigeria, for keeping it together this much. Mm. You know. Uh, as much as there's violence in this country, you know, the pain and suffering that people go through warrant for even more violence. Hmm. So we have to give ourselves credit. When you say that, people want you to break it down, though. Like, uh, he's, he's saying that going by the level of suffering, yes, the abuse, that it's poverty, disrespect, this. you know, lack of dignity. Hmm. That people have to, you know, the basic thing you can give a man is dignity for his existence. Mm. You know, there are many poor people in Europe and America, but they have their dignity. Yes. You know, this is what every man at least must have. When you see people all around the place, you know, we are so quick to be angry at one another, mm. but it's transference because we take so much. Transfer the aggression. Yes. We transfer our aggression to our loved ones and our friends and our neighbors. Instead of instead of the real people pushing it against the people who cause the problem. So you go home and then you beat your wife instead mm. of slapping the policeman that slap you on the street back. Mm. You know. Beat your children anyhow, you know. Mm. Fight with your neighbor because your guy has said something that to you. You know, so the oppression of man manifests itself in in several different ways. Wow. And that's why I think for the kind of things that we go through in this country <clears throat> And people are so, you know, still able to keep it together and still go to work, you know, and be old months and months of salary and still continue going to the work. I mean, Intercontinental Hotel, forget government, even private, like such a big hotel with so many uh, international clients and five star blitz. There are staff was outside hmm. protesting for lack of salary. Wow. And Nigerians live there, continue living. They, have, they haven't paid us uh, every day. In Takonada Hotel in Lagos. Yes, it wow. was in the news. I'm not even saying, I mean, I saw it in the news. I mean, mm. there was protests of all the staff outside there. Yeah. You know, so for me, so many things happen in this country that we overlooked. And I realized that it's just because maybe we are magnanimous people. I have mm. to see it from that perspective. Maybe that's the reason why we're happy. People. Yeah, and also, we have been indoctrinated to hate poor people. Mm. You know, so we ourselves, you know, we. Even when we are poor. We, we hate, hate ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I because mean, we are, we are it in a hurry to... You know how you know? Mm -hmm. Right now, everybody is angry that headsmen are killing people. Mm -hmm. It's a big problem in Nigeria. Yes. Everybody cannot stop being angry. But it's only because headsmen connote poor, poor house and man. Because these are people that hate all... 
because all these head men, all this, I hate our outside people. I said, stop saying that. You hate poor Hausa. I heard you yesterday praying to be like Dangote, mm -hmm. who is also Hausa. Mm -hmm. Have you forgotten that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, so it's, it's a programming. Even the northerners, it is the poor southerners that they hate. Mm. They don't hate the, the elites. The elites. Who put them in exactly. poverty. So it is, it is because the, they aspire to become like the elites. It is also the indoctrination. Mm. You know, it will, one day it can be you. You know, so we want to. We excuse our oppression because we feel that maybe one day we can access that oppression. It's or, a larger or problem. Or become the oppressor. Yeah, so we can access the oppression. Mm -hmm. When you access it, you become mm -hmm. part of uh, the oppressive class. Abby, you know. Is no, it, no, it, no, it, no, it, my professor okay. actually said that at Columbia University that the worst thing on the continent of Africa is that a lot of people who hate oppression are jealous of oppressors. So they are there, they want to drive their car, they want to live their lifestyle. That's the that's the only reason why they hate oppression. It's like it's, You're very correct. they want to cut the corner to become the oppressor. So you hate Babangida, but at the slightest moment you want to be Babangida. You behave like him. In fact, there was a musician in this country who once said that he wants to do plastic surgery to look like Babangida's wife. At the height of the oppressive activities of Babangida, that was I think Felix Liberty. Wow. Yes, yes, he, said, he wants to look like Babangida's wife. wife. Yes. You know, that was how much he you know, imbibed the oppressive. But you look at Felix Liberty a few years later, I think it was last year or so, he made music, you know, fighting against oppression under Buhari. Or, yes, he's the one who sang some song about Buhari being a bad oppressor. But like you said, he didn't hate Babangida, who was a terrible oppressor, who is also as bad as uh, Buhari at that time. Because he maybe he has was evolved. a short course. You can give him a the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he has evolved. Possibly. Maybe he has evolved. But we haven't seen much of him since that time. You know, because even a lot of when I talk to a lot of black, so-called you know, motherland people in America that are called black people in America, you know, the Africans in America that are called African Americans. Americans. <laughs> you know, I realize that many of the activists just want to access whiteness. They don't mm -hmm. really want to be free. You know, so I try to let them understand like freedom and whiteness are two different things. Mm -hmm. White privilege. And the system of global white domination and our own idea of having a free world where we can uh, project our own uh, consciousness upon upon humanity and contribute to the development of of the world is not necessarily the same as what is on ground today in fact many black people excuse capitalism even though black people are the collateral damage of capitalism we are all capitalists mm -hmm. Everybody in Nigeria wants to work for profit and do their thing, you know, because even though we know it's killing us by the millions every generation, we still run the race, you know. So I think it's just it's just the indoctrination is really strong. As Nietzsche said, one of the uh, crises of man is that he was once a child. Hmm. Really? Does it mean that man did not grow up? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. in Nigeria, people are not growing up. That's another thing I realized. Yeah. Many people still have the same dreams they had when they are 17, 18. You know, to build a house, have their wife, their kids, buy a nice car, live in a nice house, have nice things. Same dreams they had when they were children. The same dreams they have. It's like one friend 50s. always told me that um, the human brain, when it's operating at ten percent capacity, cannot think beyond nine to five jobs. Yeah, but I think but, everybody's brain operates. Yeah, but you, can, you know, there are people who push it beyond that, and that's where you see people philosophizing, inventing things, and I think we need to push our brain beyond that 10%, where we can actually understand the level and the scope of oppression, to, like you rightly said, understand who our real enemies are, as opposed to poor people hating, because you see, at the slightest provocation on the streets of Nigeria, we are the ready person to, who stole cell phone. We are ready to destroy. And then it's killed, it's, you know, the dousing with petrol, fire, somebody has a lighter ready, tire, everything. <laughs> but then the next moment, Babangida is driving past, everybody stands at attention. Even for that moment, if a rich man was passing by, they would stop the killing of a poor man to pay <laughs> him, you know, accolades. And it's, I, 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 I don't even think, uh, even if they don't pay him accolades, I don't think that is, is, is good enough. Yeah. You know? There's no stigma when you harm black motherland people. Mm -hmm. When African no, anybody that is destroying African people has no repercussion. No, it's true. No repercussion you know, for doing it. And I think the real reason is because as as we are here in Nigeria, there's nobody really articulating 
to us, to the people. Nobody with the means, you know, people with all the means, they are not really trying their best to articulate to the people a vision, the narrative, you know. Whereas it is difficult for Nigerians to see things in historical context because we are not raised in that context. And there's no history anymore. We don't Even see, thoughts. you know, and everything we know about ourselves starts from 1914. I mean, even Buhari said, is the God knows why he made Nigeria. <laughs> so, immediately he said that, and I realized that Nigeria was only made in 1914. Even according to his own Islam, the earth is 6,000 years old. Scientifically, it's 2. Point, it's, uh, how many billion? 2.8 billion years. Mm. You know? So, so let's say 6,000 years that the earth, Nigeria only existed a hundred years ago. How did God do that? That means God is Lord Lugard and the Queen. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. Basically. Because God did not create Nigeria. Lord Lugard did. And the Queen. And his girlfriend. Names and go top man. The man who, who, charter, who, in, who, who uh, was in charge of the United African Company. Who mm -hmm. subdued. USA, yeah. Yeah. You know, who USA. came to to start to ne negotiate on behalf of the Queen. Nigeria was gonna, actually going to be called Godesha, mm. like Rhodesia after Cecil Rhodes. It was going to be called Godesha after Go Topman, but then it didn't happen. But do you, we would have been Godeshians. Yeah, yeah. Do you realize that a lot of African <laughs> countries, were actually, in the West African region, they were named after resources found in them? Yes, as many. There's a good coast. Or after the person that yes, the white man has saw this. Uh, there is Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast, of course. Cameroon <laughs> is named after shrimp. Cameroon, that's a place to find shrimp, Shrinks. lobsters. So I won't be surprised, and that's why that lady who named Nigeria just look at it and says, "It's oh, Niger, Niger yeah. you know, like we are pets." Exactly, you know. So I mean, so, this is um, so for me. It is when I when I talk to people generally about Nigeria, I said, I hope that one day we'll have a president that's not going to tell us. I want to build you bridges, but I want to teach you how to build bridges. Because it, you know, not say I want to build roads, but no, I want to teach my people how to make build roads. Yes. Not that you want to make, give us electricity. You can't give us anything. You have to make them happen. We have them. to be able to. Uh, if we don't know how to do it, no, that means we can't not, sustain it. it. It has not been well, done. I think this this is important considering that, and we'll make a segue into that. When I started this, there were there's a whole lot of question about. So what are you gonna do? I, and my position is that the future will be like. And conversations cannot be about how many kilometers of roads we build. Yes, no. it's important, but it's about you know in the next world that we are aspiring to enter into the next era. What is the place of Nigeria? What is the place of a Nigerian young person, old person? But you know, the how we're able to represent. But proceed, the road design we even have right now. Building more, this is a colonial setup. Of course. We have not designed, like, these so called Nigerians have not designed Nigeria. We are just following what colonialists set up to extract. Mm -hmm. That's why in Nigeria, the only thing that develops is for business. Yeah. Every road they build is so that goods can move. Everything they do is so that money goods can be made. Goods and services. It is time <clears throat> for a government that will invest in the people. Yeah. Because when, people are, when we invest in the people, then the people can build the country. That was the reason why we talked about minimum wage and i'm i said i'm ashamed to even be proposing 300 dollars per month yes per month but for me people are saying how we how is how you going to find it no no they said that it's going to cause inflation <laughs> what is the meaning of inflation when you're investing in your people and uh, even bill gates as reactionary as he is kept telling them say look the solution to your problem is you have to make investment in human capital you understand? That's that's Bill Gates too. And Bill Gates is not trying to save the world. He's not trying to save you. But he was honest enough, or at least, you know, bold enough. And of all the places that Bill Gates has ever spoken, he said Nigeria is the first place where he has shown any sign of even courage. Otherwise, he's a very shy person doing business, making his billions. But Nigeria, because why? He has lost so much money here. <laughs> Whatever he's doing, that he had to tell them, look. <laughs> You better go and invest in your people because otherwise I'm going to pack my things and just leave you guys. Because Big Gate met diseases in Nigeria that he's attending to that is no longer in existence anywhere in the world again. Things like polio, 
And like you're saying, he probably look at it and say, maybe if they had their own doctors, like the Cubans did, yeah, they don't pull you anymore. You know, but the, the thing about the Cubans is that the Cuban doctors are ideologically sound. Mm -hmm. They are Cubans to the blood. They are Cubans first. We have more doctors in Nigeria today than we had in 1960. That's right. But there are more people that cannot be treated in Nigeria today than mm -hmm. in 1960. Yeah. It was easier to get treated in 1960. The more anything. lawyers we have, the, the less justice there the is. The less justice we get. <laughs> the more police we get, the, the more insecure our lives are. are. Because the more politicians, the more backward our politics. Yes. So why is that? The more we want peace, the more there's violence and war. So why is that? Because we don't have leaders. Be yes, because we the country is not. The country is not for us. Yes, it's not for us because those that. The country are for they don't have the prop you know, the way the doctors that they use are available mm -hmm. look for those who are just <laughs> joining us this is shem kutsi my good friend for a long long time you know uh and uh when we started this we went to his house but tonight we couldn't go to his house because there's no electricity there no uh me i don't like to <laughs> let me be honest Listen, don't, listen, President. Don't, don't, don't excuse me. Right, I will right. touch you. <laughs> don't, don't do like I've been having lights for the past five days, please. Oh, yeah. How don't did please. it come about? I don't know. Maybe because you arrived. No, this even before I go back. See, listen, what, whatever is happening, keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> that is completely for Guario. You know, no. They would love for this. No, but whatever is happening, keep it up. Is <laughs> they it, would love no, for this. Is only my see, listen, even what I'm saying, like. I'm saying for myself, I'll keep it up in my area, but yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that light is good in Nigeria. There's a lack of, what you just said is important. Yes. There's a lack of connect, there's a disconnect between city life and rural life. Mm -hmm. We, the city dwellers, always believe that rural people are not part of Nigeria. It's not like the poor life. people, yeah. the thing you were talking about now. Because our, our elites have been very, very ingenious at destroying solidarity among nigerian people hmm. you know it is it is something that is invested billions and it's still you also destroy solidarity to that we don't trust ourselves yes yes and to love ourselves we to make sure that we believe that we have our own problem and enemies and our own enemy mm -hmm. you know to continue to be victims i said something that you know france Fanon said something i repeated on beat fm everybody went ah i said the only way to stop being a victim is to become the enemy of your oppressor. Oh yeah, that's true. The day you become the enemy of your oppressor is yeah, the day you have shared the thing with yeah, him, yes. And become his enemy with whatever that entails. And that's the reason why I'm talking so much. I have become the enemy of my oppressor for a long time. Yeah. They don't give me any kind of work here. So I gotta work. You know? I need to work. You don't, you don't get invited. It's, maybe it's because you don't press sing. And but what is there to praise? Even yeah. when woman, you know, even when people discuss me, oh, can you know just tone it down no 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 we can actually even get you some nice endorsement mm. i tell like really i know like when you get him you hear people on their mobile phone in nigeria every day they are swearing mm -hmm. for these telecommunication operators mm -hmm. be it anybody you know go better for glue you know go better for uh, yeah, MTN. Yeah. you know go better for ethe you know go, that's like all I everywhere hear. you go make sure go strike that's you that's all i hear all day <laughs> so if i'm your ambassador Am I not receiving ambassadorial share mm -hmm. of only like it's <laughs> you know? So that's that's what I'm just saying. So for me, there are many things that we as a people have to decide. You, for example, you are putting yourself on the line for Nigerian people. Many people support you. You've come up with the AAC, Africa Action Congress, but still, many young people believe in Nigeria that their vote is their power. I put something on Facebook today. I say the elites don't respect your vote. Mm -hmm. The security forces don't. Hmm. Everybody's advertising PVC up and down. There is somebody's contract. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you don't collect, you won't collect his money. Yes. The more he makes, the more you collect, the more he collects. Yes. So they can advertise. By the end of the day, what if your PVC is we must nothing, not you only to it's not only to vote. Things. The voting is just a tool. Mm -hmm. We must engage. It is our duty, especially in this generation. In my group, Nigeria is I call us the liberation generation, yes. because. We did generate this has to be the generation to liberate this country. We can't take it as a oh okay, when for where runs for election, we'll go and vote. Or oh, we'll I just go and vote for him and that's it. No. Shore alone in the pres as the president of Nigeria can do only so much. Shore has to control the Senate. House of Assembly. 
state government, their assemblies, the security forces, young people get to work. Mm -hmm. And we have a lifetime opportunity now. I mean, That's why I tell people we have seven percent, seventy percent of our population are young people. They are there. They have the power, which is beyond PVC. Like you said, all you need to do the most powerful and most potent PVC at this time is what Fanon said. You know, be an enemy of your oppressor. Let it be very clear. Don't let him be in doubt when you are passing that. You know, you get the vibe. Like <laughs> yes, of course. They are not. They are not playing. Let it be very clear. You know. Even on social media, where you need young people, where they control the levers of conversation and engagement, they are still there, double speaking of course, and double dealing, of course, of course. I see know, them. assigning themselves roles, I see them. calling themselves media influencers, I see them. I see them. only to gather followers and then take the followers and sell to I see the politicians that they know we so we sell them down. The I see river. them. Yeah. I see them. So this is this is why this conversation is. It's the reason why I pull you in whatever I, wherever I can find you, uh, and to talk about. I know like recently, and which I, you know you told me not to talk about because people know your position about cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's part of the elevation of conversation that we need to have because maybe some of the things that fella, for example, saw some forty years ago. You know, people didn't get it and. Uh, and then you know he was vilified i remember when i was growing up and my father had me listening to i was listening to zombie ah because that time they had bandits you know why are you listening to fella and all those kind of, of course my father later explained to me why he did that because they were all guarding the kids not to be on the front line like fella uh did you know and you know the worst person you can be in life is to be the son of a teacher or a preacher I was the son of a teacher. That's how I turned out this way. I think Fela was the son of a preacher. That's why he turned the way it's because. So what's my own problem? It's because you're son of Fela now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big problem. Anyways, a teacher and preacher together. Together, you are the son of a teacher, a preacher, and a prophet. <laughs> Bad combination. Anyways, but uh, it's important to you know. I want us to keep talking to our generation. That is not about you know. Sometimes they feel like when we go and ask them to do something right. We are asking for a favor and that's the problem i have sometimes even going to some of the places i should naturally be at it's because i don't understand why i have to beg you to say look make your country work you know make fight the oppressor retain your education get paid normal salary they want me to go to the nlc and beg them to say they should sign up to minimum wage i don't have to because you don't even need negotiation or minimum wage the president the governor of a state no. in nigeria will not only get paid uh, security votes, they also, before they finish their term, get paid their pensions. In Some of them have two houses, five houses, lifetime of security provision, you have to buy a car for them every year. And Nigerians want me to celebrate when Buhari pays pension of Nigeria always workers 40 something years after. They did not even remember to pay the pension until the Nigeria yeah, they started failed miserably. <laughs> so they decided, okay, just to cover up all of that. So it's how how do you confront the lethargy amongst young people? You know how do you come around and you see people, young people who ordinarily should say, look, this is this is power on the, on the street. We can just pick it and they're just like merry go round. Nah, let's take it easy and don't offend them. You know it's like being low. Be very careful what you say on radio. You know watch your back and all those kind of things. How do you deal with that? Yeah, because I think personally. People are really mystified by the system, and it's important to also demystify. Mm. You know. Also, the duty of nation building has to be seen as serious. I believe that many young people see it as you know the duty of someone else. Mm. But we've not really been taught duty. I, I always tell people like everybody wants, everybody likes to get a job. But nobody wants to do duty hmm. you know and there's different between a job and duty. and duty you know and we owe this we owe ourselves our country and our own future this duty to be the generation because one generation has to pay the price yes and sacrifice that's why i'm not even you know okay even if nobody wants to it's not only AAC, i mean there's, there's so many young we have to organize we have to see it as something that is valuable you know okay. we've been raised in a way not to value ourselves 
in this country as motherland people. Going back to what we were saying, see, it is only when the elites trigger their our programming that they are indoctrinated into us that we react. Mm. So that's why majority of Nigerians are reactionary to the, about these headsmen. So, but I am sure that more Nigerians have died in our own hospitals this year due to lack of health care than the headsmen have killed this year. And roads. And roads. Have, have we been... Does that create that kind of outrage? Mm. Or the death by headsmen is just so different? Do we care when black people die in Somalia, in South Africa, in Kenya? No. But, but we care when there's, a, when, when there's something in France. We're checking in and out of France exactly because on Facebook. This is the indoctrination. Not to value ourselves. Yes. The lies that we've been told that we've not added anything to humanity. We've not been told that we are children of sacrifice. Many people don't even understand that the fact that we can sit down here today and do this interview, and you, oh, it was sacrifice. Many people gave their lives for us to have these opportunities. Black people were never invited to the table for anything. I mean, all over the world, even in our countries here in Nigeria, to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, to be a student, somebody had to die, pay the price, fight, struggle, you know? So... I want you to... Do you guys have what there's any question for Shell maybe you know because, because people are watching. Uh, ah, okay, cool. Yeah. Because maybe that was important. For you. They have questions for you. Is there anybody watching to see if there's any questions? Not, not yet. Not yet. yet. They are enjoying you too much. <laughs> if it was me now, they would have bombarded me. No, you because you, you know you have to you have to give them answers. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you, are, you are giving very real concrete answers, I gotta tell you. You're doing very well. Yeah, because I that's this is just what I believe, you know, yeah. personally that we are all overlooking mm. it's our duty to this to this country. Yes. You know, what are we outraged about? What annoys us? The only thing that annoys us is when our the pillars, these fake pillars that they've planted erected, in our mind, yes, that they've erected in our souls, in our in our psyche, and they know how to push those pillars, you know. So anytime anybody touch those pillars, you become enraged. This is my favorite picture of Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> so Nigeria politician with food in front and then he uses big boots to hold the hand of the kids down. Yeah, I see. So that he's can't. eating all by ah. himself. <laughs> this is my favorite picture. Uh, so and most of the system, you know, like we look at our country. I always tell people, like, how do you analyze this? If the police kill black people in America, they say it's because they are white. Yes. So why do cops kill us here? Exactly. Uh, why do they, because we are why do they shoot us on, indiscriminately? Black on black violence now. <laughs> That doesn't even exist. There's just violence. Man yeah, is violent, exactly. you know. There's no such thing as black or black. You kill the person closest to you, that's how man is built. But anyway, let me just... Our banks don't give us loan here. Just the way banks don't give black yeah. people loan anywhere in the world. Yeah. And in America, they will say it's because of uh, racism. racism. Mm. But isn't our banks here also an extension of the banks in America? Um, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying <laughs> even our, our security forces is still the it's, same colonial training that they, they call them. them. They used to call them constabulary. Yeah. So there's a queen police now. So it is still that training. The training against... There are countries in the... There are still countries in the Caribbean that are still using the head of the queen and their currency. Yeah. And they still pray to the queen, they preach to the queen. All kinds of queen, 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 queen <laughs> like that, you know. We too, we are still in the Commonwealth. Nigeria is in the Commonwealth. Exactly. And, so and there's nothing common in Commonwealth. So At all. Commonwealth is not common. You know, we will need visa to go to their country. Are we exactly. Commonwealth? Exactly. <coughs> because we are Commonwealth for the conference. Uh, to swell up the Commonwealth conference. Yes, yeah, so it look good. Yes. Anyway, so, you know, if you have any questions for Sean Kutu, please uh, do ask him. He's on ground today to... Yeah, oh, there. There's a question for him. Yes. For Sean, will not me. Yes, please sorry. let them bombard him. Really? Sure. Is it performing at the convention? Performing at the convention Saturday? Performing? I'm not performing. Like nobody has told me about it. Well, he's not been invited to perform, but we're inviting him to come and just talk to us. He just arrived, you know, just found him out today, found out he was in town today. You know, it's not easy to get him to perform. That's one thing you should know. Even after you pay his fees, he may decide not to perform. That's uh, <laughs> That's well, fake news. That's presidential fake news. We can't afford If I collect money, I always perform. Yes. He's a good guy. 
So any other question for Yes, what is message for the youth to step up and take country back, the country back? Yes, that they have to engage the system. We have to completely engage this system fully. It's time for the youth of Nigeria to not just uh, energize, but also organize. If you're not a part of, I believe that if you're over 25 in Nigeria today, and uh, not an active part of any political movement, yeah, then you're not doing your duty. We are not being educated in our schools enough to understand what and who we are as motherland people and the, the the glorious the glorious future that awaits us if only we can take our destiny in our own hands you know that's why there's so much distraction in front of us everything we do is imposed on us by the elite as young people that's why they make you feel bad if you're poor mm. they make being poor you know, look like a crime or some kind of sin mm -hmm. against against God, mm -hmm. you know. Because they they have to make you feel like you are your you are your own problem. They have to push your mind down like that. You know, you look at the TV, you look at the radio, you listen, go to your church, go to your. It's the same. The mosque is the same elitist message. Basically, everybody else is your enemy. Everybody's trying to kill you. You know that's why you are poor. Your father wants to kill you. Mother wants to kill you. You know all these kind of things. So we can't organize. We can't. We can't trust ourselves enough to come together to be something. You know. So I really believe that. You know the youth of Nigeria need to be a part of something. We all need to be a part of something. I mean, if a man like Showeli has come out to say he wants to be president, why is his party not full of young people? You know, there are so many parties why are not full of young people wanting to be senators. You know, because we need to. Taking the country back is not by taking the presidency back. You know, you don't, the presidency is not the country. If you want to take this country back, you have to be ready for every local Everywhere. government. Everywhere. Every state assembly, every state gov every state government, every federal parliament parliamentarian position, we must be aspiring to fill those with the right ideology. And right candidates. Yeah, right candidates and right ideology, yeah. especially. And not this thing about age. Everybody running around age, oh, not too young to rule, or oh, he's too old. No, it is always about the ideology. It doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with age. Um, Shoele here could be 20 years old and I'll support him because I know what he stands for. And I might as well be 100 and I'll still support him. I'll still be like this. Because I know what he stands for. Yes. But yeah. I think people are discussing age because it has become a factor in how much we invest in hospitals in London. <laughs> <laughs> So, and those kind of characteristics. I don't think people hate old people because they're old. They hate old people because they have disappointed them so much. Yeah, but the they young ones... Population of young but I people. see a lot of young people too with no, lots terrible. of money yeah. that, you know, rather just spend it every week, you know. I mean, okay, how much do you think goes back to Europe in a week from Lagos alone through our nightclubs? Hmm. How many, how much do you think would go to? How much do you yeah, think? Millions of dollars. Exactly, I mean, the we... You know, they don't even need to come and appropriate our money anymore like they used to do in our father's era where they would are intelligent, they have to bring all these fake laws and crimes and st literally come and steal. No, now, we just willingly work hard in Africa, sweat, do everything. To return everything back to But because the of their, the, the message, the indoctrination that you cannot be yourself, you cannot have value as a black man, you know, the identity of being black, this black, you know, the crim criminalization of the identity. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at it. Look at the TV today. Every black person you see on TV is either an athlete or an entertainer mm -hmm. or a singer. He, you know, so black people don't aspire. Black. I went to my primary school. I say this thing all the time because it completely amazed me. Every kid there wanted to be a musician. Mm -hmm. Every kid. And in Nigeria today, people are dropping law degrees to become event planners. Mm -hmm. They're dropping medical degrees to become tailors. And people are praising them. Even the Minister of Health said that his tailor is a medical doctor, so that all everybody should not go and be exactly. Or, and this is in a country where we say we are dying by the because the country cannot meet the aspirations of the young people anymore. You understand? We can't treat our sick. Yeah, so we, we, there are no doctors to do it because the doctors are doing event planning. <laughs> I mean, even if you're a talented doctor, you you're looking for the way out. 
because the system doesn't. If you're a talented it. engineer, you're looking for the way out. Mm-hmm. If you're talented anything, you're looking for the way out. Look at the TV, and then, as I was saying about this criminalization of our identity, when you listen to the backstory of most of the pe- black people you see on TV, it's a criminal story they put there. For reasons I do not understand why every black person on TV must have, you know, if, you, if it's a sport man, you say, man, I was in gangs. If it wasn't for sports, I will be in prison. <laughs> I don't understand it. Like... Every musician would tell you I used to sell drugs, I used to do this. Where do they get these people from? Who are these people? Well, it's profiling. That's so, part of we the as, so, now if you have money as a black man, you have to show that. And you're not famous. Nobody knows you. So, how would they know you're not a criminal? Since every famous black person on TV was almost is a criminal if it wasn't for his music or the sport he was playing and you are not playing sports or singing how, how do we know you are not a criminal sir I, I you have to wear all the I, I all the expensive clothes <laughs> wear gold chain around your neck forgetting that your brothers are dying in the congo every day you know for this thing to be you know to be exploited i understand if things that we need okay we need cars we need phones so we are exploited for that okay fine but there's certain things like gold and diamond chain and all these expensive watch now, I know we don't need to survive and we know black people are dying by the thousands every day because of these things and we still want to use it to show people that oh I'm not that I'm not that black person that you think me I'm the one that have made it you know so this is the only way we can survive or exist so we have to elevate above this cage it's a cage it's a deliberate cage that they've put us as motherland people as young people especially <clears throat> so you find many young people that cannot escape this dream you know because you have to because you have to understand whiteness is also economics mm. to access this whiteness if you have some money you can access whiteness so mm. throughout your life you spend your yeah. life trying to access you know whiteness you know wanna be, you want to you know wanna so that you can just see you <laughs> as soon as you make money you don't know why you're doing it but you're moving straight to the white neighborhood or the rich people neighborhood you know you start saying things like ah, black people eh Ah, they don't get sense. <laughs> ah, you know, ah, ah, black, people get, black people get black mind. <laughs> ah, I mean, you know, but we don't understand. But it's a cage, and if you do not elevate, you cannot escape it. You know, like when they say, "Oh, you crabs in a barrel." Black people are crabs in a barrel. Mm-hmm. They were pulling ourselves down. I say, listen, is the barrel the natural home of the of crab? The crab, yes. Is the crab supposed to be in the barrel in the first place? It's a cage for you. Release those crabs, put them on the shore of the beach, and they'll be helping themselves to the sea. And then help themselves back out. Um, I've exactly. seen that before. Exactly. Where crabs join hands together to get to in the, their natural environment, they'll come to the So don't talk about the crabs pulling themselves down in the barrel. Talk about the, the barrel. barrel. <laughs> Yes, get rid of the barrel. That's true. There's a question that says why are celebrities not coming out to support the movement? I mean, because uh, celebrities, I don't know. <laughs> so ask them. Is it celebrities are also. Yeah, the ones them. empowering them. I mean, I don't know how. See, let me know. Let me say something. I don't like when people ask me celebrity questions in Nigeria, because people don't really empower me in this country. They don't, you know, come to my shows. They don't call me for show. They don't do anything, but they always want me to answer a celebrity question. <laughs> you are the one that's empowering them. You are their millions and millions of followers. Only after the two thousand followers on Facebook. So I don't know about celebrity ship and why they don't talk. We empower our celebrities. If we cannot hold them to account by ourselves, then because we it's, it's economic it. too. Uh, and this is very important. Uh, I get that question all the time. Oh, why don't you go and meet the celebrities, get their endorsement? And I said to them, Why did somebody become a celebrity in the first place? It's because we are following them. You are paying to go to their shows, you are buying their products so they, they, they endorse or to which they are ambassadors for. If you want celebrities to fight for freedom, huh? You fight them economically. Do you use your economic power to exactly. push them in the right direction? I mean, you know, b- boycott is a strong strength. Nigerians don't yeah. even bother to use. use. And they use it in South Africa. We have the strength of boycott. I mean, in this country now, we are using imported petrol, mm-hmm. and we are shouting every day we want refinery. They are borrowing Dangote seven billion to build refinery. I can't build for Nigeria. He's, be, uh, he's building the refinery for Nigeria, you know, his own yeah, private, yeah. Yeah. with public. Anyway, let me, let me not even go into PPP matter. <laughs> That's on that discussion entirely. Mm-hmm. 
But we in Nigeria today we are using imported for what? Why should we pay in world prices? All these, all these billionaires in Nigeria were made by Nigeria. If there's a problem, it's time for them to sacrifice for Nigeria. And if they refuse, Nigeria should boycott their products. Products. But exactly because position. we want to use our car, nobody wants to <laughs> sacrifice. Trust me, before we boycott their petrol for one month, they will bring down the price. You don't need your government to make any law. You don't need it. Eh? We serve no buy. We sit in our house. We take public, we carpool. We take public transport. We show solidarity against our enemies. No. It is us, God, that we use to increase the price. When they stop selling the fuel, of us go and queue in their petrol station. Do not start showing the queue all over the news. Everybody, else, government, do something. Government, do something. Government say, oh, government and who is government? Who is oil seller? They are <laughs> the one and the same. Yeah, the, same the same people in the government are the same people selling the, same the oil. Yeah. Yeah, say, uh, uh, okay, okay, we, okay. We have agreed. We we we'll raise the price. So uh, oh no, confess. Because okay, no, we we'll raise this back small again. I don't fall for that job. I mean now, I'm involved in nation building. No more falling for their gimmick. There's so much gimmicks going on, we have to really educate ourselves to be deep to see. If I see that what I want to do cannot have the power to bring what I want to see, I don't bother engaging in it. To protest, you have to protest to somebody that cares. If you protest to somebody that doesn't care, you are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. Well, the elevation of protests. You know, it's boycott. Yes, after, that's what I'm saying. Like, so we have to boy, we have so, to start boycotting about celebrities, in this country. You know, if, if celebrities don't represent your aspiration, you start by removing yourself from their Twitter account. Exactly. You don't remove yourself from their Instagram account. And exactly. Instagram account that is two million people. If they discover in five days that it has reduced to five hundred thousand, you are, will be talking to this one. Doesn't even need boycott. It's just a boycott of their social circle. You know. So, what people have not, I, I don't think anybody ever thought about it, and that's what I keep telling them. Why are you coming to me to say that celebrities should People always come to me and if say, you celebrity. believe me, if you believe in me and your celebrity, the celebrity you love is not, go to their page and say, Look, if you don't support my candidates, I don't follow you anymore. You know, and if everybody's saying that to all the celebrities in the order that they come, both on Instagram, hey, but you know, people too, many young people in the just want to be celebrities, so that's what that was. What so, and they want to be company. celebrities without political. A responsibility. responsibility yes you know you know this black excellence thing is very interesting black excellence ah is all over the place where they're greedy for the culture all of them <laughs> but france fanon used to be negritude in the 60s you know we have to go back and read our real founding yeah. fathers the people that fought for us they wrote a lot of books a lot of ideas a lot of solutions because they they knew what was coming you know you're talking about Frank Fanon. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Educate them. <laughs> <laughs> so, black excellence is largely irresponsible. All they are doing is, you know, showing their, you know, how good they are. But they are not good to their people. They're not giving back as much as the people have given to them. You understand? But that's the job of the people to make sure that exactly. if you are loyal to somewhere, that loyalty Me, you know, fluff. We they come and they, they come and they yeah. go. You know, this is not you know, this is not life. It's not life. The thing I mean petrol, for example, that one is life. How can we be afraid to boycott? How can we be afraid to take action against those that are always taking ag actions against us? Do you have any questions yes. for Shamu? Do you believe in revolution and is Nigeria ready for it? Well, the thing about revolutions are, you know, is this. The thing about revolution is, <clears throat> it can happen in many different forms. But what is most important is the people is that people are politicized. Because if they're not politicized, it cannot be a revolution. It will be a mob action. I mean, I'm really this is what I'm seeing happening in Nigeria one day. A mob action. People will just be fed up. They will start small. Inside burning shop, then they will burn one police car. They will see nothing can happen to them. They will elephant from there, start bringing people out of their car just because you are rich. They will start entering people's house, but then they will go to one big man's house. Or, you know, I see that happening. In fact, it's happening in some areas. Already, I mean, what is Boko Haram if it's not that? <laughs> you know, he said that Boko Haram is also an arm of our government. Let's see the truth. <laughs> well, um, 
No, it's true. Nobody can tell me. No, no, of course. They even the, the only it now. the only people. You said there are children. That's what Jonathan first said. We can't go and kill our Jonathan children. Jonathan also said that there are Boko Haram people within their party. But if I first call them, it's their children. Before even I said there are Boko Haram people within the party. And for me, the only people that kill Nigerians is the Nigerian government. Mm -hmm. You can't say you are fighting Nigerian government and you are killing poor Nigerian people. No, no, that's the job of Nigerian government. <laughs> you that's can't, what they do. That's probably. what they do. You can't tell me you are doing it and you are yeah. fighting them. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come with a different tactics. Yes. You know. So, there are... Anything that makes you kill Nigerians. Is, you are you part are of part the... Of the that's what they do. Mm -hmm. So, you can't come and tell me you are doing it for one cause or one... It's a lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. You know, so, revolution, let's go back, you know. So, for me, if people are largely politicized, then we can have a real successful revolution. But the way Nigeria is going, we're going to have a revolution like Somalia, where it's going to be a failed state, everywhere will be broken into different pieces with everybody controlling what they can hold or grab, you know, strong That's man politics. That's already happening though. Yeah. Even politically, politicians are holding large swaths of land in Nigeria. I know. There are people who <clears> own <throat> states, <laughs> own local government. You know, people they they divided Nigeria. No, but where they are now is that they're still able to control majority yeah. of their henchmen. Yes. It's going to get to the stage where the henchmen will be like. What, what am I? What why am I, I listening to, to you? Why do I have to go to? Why, why am I listening to you? Why do I have to go to Jagaban? Yeah, you know me going. <laughs> well, you know, I'm my own Jagaban. <laughs> I'm <in> Jagaban here. Yeah. <laughs> you know so. Uh, so that's why there's no time to waste. You know, there has to be a large orientation for the people of this country, so that they know the task ahead. They know what we have to do. You know, I mean, I I told people only that one of the all this one of the major forces in Nigeria. Has to be the so-called area boys and the alimanjeri all over the place yeah. we have to bring dignity to their lives they have to come into the nation, national building in a positive way i mean if you are if you're an area boy then you cannot decide if i say okay stop being an area boy and come and build roads for the government but this would rather use them to fight and then leave them on the street for four years they or them fight and then i mean them and no everybody has to be a part of this um, advancement. So yeah, I do believe in revolutions, but in Nigeria we also have the ability for a political revolution. Do you have any other question there? Yes. Yes. How do we incite ourselves in the right direction? Uh, by changing our values. Values are very important. I think the things that we, we cherish in Nigeria is are the wrong things. Not that they are the wrong things, they are just on, on inessential. They are, not, they are not the things that we they are an essential that add things value to our lives. that do not really add value to us as a people. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, we've bought so much into the American dream through our elites. Because you see, the only way our elites in Nigeria can show their luxury, show their wealth is through luxury. They have no other expression of wealth because they are not really dynamic. You know, they are not really the, the bourgeoisie that they claim to be. You see, because to be a bourgeoisie, you have to pay the price. Mm -hmm. Go and look at the West. The bourgeoisie there, they discovered worlds, they, they created realities, yeah. man. You know? They invented they stuff. They invented stuff. They, they run fa factories. Multinational corporations. <laughs> Apple alone is worth $1 trillion today. The whole Nigeria was rebased and debased. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and they found out we have only, no. all Nigeria is worth $505 billion. That's, only that's, Apple. That's fraud, by the way. Only Apple is worth a trillion dollars. So, who is bourgeoisie here? We are not, you know. So, these people, this pseudo bourgeoisie, you know, that they, you know, so to, to make you feel little, they have to, that's all they can do. They cannot build industries, they cannot invent, they cannot innovate. I task them today to invent, innovate, build industries without taking, without scraping it off the back of our people. As they've been doing and feeding off the back of Nigeria, they can't. So they have to show you the luxury, continuously bombard your mind with their high profile lifestyle, you know, so that you have the wrong values, you know, so, you are, so that you are everything before you are in Nigeria, you know. I mean, who in Nigeria, how many young people in Nigeria today will not take American passports? No, I, I, I say that uh, campaign rally is that if they bring the Titanic here, put it in Lagos airport and say after two hours of. Uh, Shipping or 
Now this thing will sink. The thing will still be full. <laughs> ah, you so know, they will say, ah, let's go first. Don't worry. Somebody will say, don't worry. Me, I go in charge of me. I throw the water. Come on. You know, go sink. There are people to. to I mean, to, people can go and sink at the bottom to, of the Mediterranean I mean, Sea. To cross the Mediterranean yeah. is $3,000. Yes. To go and die. 20 mm -hmm. people escape from a village together. They all have three three thousand mm dollars -hmm. to go and risk their life to enter Europe. If, if you can give us that amount as a donation today, no, I don't even want them to give it to you, no, no, no. Percy. No, Let them pull it among themselves and do something in their no, community. Wait, wait. If, if they give us as a donation, <laughs> they will take this country and turn it around. But that's all they have. No, they have to. They have them to give. Let them give. Let them give. And they will give you something from the profits. Let them build something in the community. Yeah. That's sixty thousand dollars. But you don't understand that the political elite in this country, mm. if you go and build anything in your community that they don't like, they will destroy. Do you know here of a lawmaker? They built something. I think it was a borehole or something. The village people offended him. He took the thing. He destroyed the whole. Thing. Uh, me, I'm not saying. No, it's money. I'm not saying borehole. I'm saying those twenty boys that escaped from their village with three three thousand dollars. That means they had sixty thousand dollars between them. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to go and reach their life, but they they don't have any value for Nigeria. They no longer well, because Nigeria didn't give them exactly what they live for. We as a people, we have been indoctrinated and detached from the real value of our existence, which is our nation, our camaraderie as a people. You know. So that's what is missing among young young people this is this is really what is missing so we need to as i said escape that cage that they try to impose on us you know and really see them for the nothing that they are because they really are nothing they yeah. really are nothing they have done nothing they will do nothing i mean we've had them forever okotiebo was the first one the one that had the long yeah that used to carry his exactly. i mean you know We've had all these the richest men in the world in it for a long time. Scar is rapper. I mean, MKO Abiola is another. Today, how many of his companies are out there still functioning? All these people that you are hailing, they are doing nothing but suck your blood. Everything that they have has been taken directly from your pocket. Mm -hmm. They are the reason you cannot have schools. They are the reason you cannot have good roads. They are the reason your children cannot have good health care. They are the reason your aged parents cannot have good care. That the reason our dreams and our aspirations cannot be met. Yes, yes. You have to see them as that. But you make the excuse in your heart because your pastor has told you that tomorrow God will bless you, you'll be like that. It's a lie. <laughs> Statistically, 90% of us fall into poverty in every generation, no matter how hard we try. 5% make it, another 5% work for the 5% oh, that have made it. Yes. And that is what happens to black people anywhere in the world. In fact, World Bank itself has said you, the probability of you to rise above your class in a capitalist system as it is set up today is greater than you winning the lottery. So you have a better chance lottery, of winning the lottery out of poverty, than climbing under, out of this poverty under, under this system, system that you have yeah. living in today. Well, you know, I one of the things I have to say is that I'm blessed to have been part of people who did not believe in the World Bank and their policies ah. right from the university. And people question me all the time, how do you go to the World Bank meeting when you become president? I said, we don't need the meeting. Because Why are we went, going there? I need. I went to class. I went to school with the kids who are now working at the World Bank. What are they coming to tell me? You know, <clears throat> no, what are I we tell them? Why don't you go to Alabama first and solve the poverty problem in the place? Because they need your. They need loans there so that they, in Detroit. They, yes, in Detroit. In Flint, came, Michigan. Yes. Children are drinking lead. lead so you know. So uh, it's, it's <laughs> an hour, and I, I don't want to take too much of no, it. You just, you just came back from a long trip, but. You know, it's always a pleasure to the, have The you. less IMF and World Bank meeting our presidents go to, the better for the country. And the more town hall and local meetings they do, the better we will be. Mm, yes. <laughs> and uh, the people that we have enough people who can go to the IMF meetings. We have people who are tourists in this country. We can just be sending them to the meeting all the time. They report back, nobody to take notes. Even the people we send officially, they fall asleep at the meeting anyways. 
So we have enough people who can do that. But honestly, no, we have said are not coming in. Yeah, we can't afford yeah, it. So Nigeria cannot afford. Let me tell you another thing. Don't you know how much we spend on the tickets? Nigeria cannot can afford all these trips. <laughs> we need to put a house in order. Listen, we cannot afford Aso Rock. We cannot afford all these state yeah. palaces. Yes. We cannot Guest afford houses. all these their bulletproof car, yes. their security, yes. their allowance. Mm -hmm. We ca these are the reasons we cannot have anything good no as Nigerians. Yes. We cannot afford private jets. Listen, Nigerians, I'm not telling you this to make you feel down or make you feel little. I'm just telling you as it is, we are statistically a poor country with rich politicians. Mm -hmm. It does not work that way. We cannot pay prices that we cannot afford to keep an elite going when they're not even investing it back in the people. I will understand if they were taking all these billions and industrializing. And building schools and not, and building not just libraries. symbolic um, foundations, you know, like, okay. Yeah, I mean, every street in Nigeria, in Lagos has a hotel. There's no, how many libraries are in Ikeja? How many libraries are in VI? Probably how many libraries are in Suleri? No. I mean, how many youth centers do we have in Lagos? There are more bars. Bars everywhere, Nigeria, hotels there are, there are everywhere. And hospitals. What are we doing? Why, why are the people staying in all these places? I mean, you know. Thank you so much, you know, uh, you know wealth of uh, your experience, I love all the time and we just have to make this country work in our life. Everybody has to be involved. That's a commitment I have and that's why I always love for you to have this conversation. People are watching and they are listening and we want them to key into this, you know, that whatever it is, get some education, <coughs> political education, politicize yourself enough to be incited and angry to change your objective conditions that have been imposed upon you by our very wicked leaders and whomever is the person controlling them from outside or within. No, there's imperialism. Of course, I understand it. There's what I'm saying is that, you know, of course. there's imperialism also, but people have also lived under imperialism and so-called imperialism and use their common sense. When somebody was talking about, she came, one friend of ours came from South Africa today, passed through Rwanda. Rwanda air. She said she didn't want to get out of the plane because it was so good. It was so good. Rwanda, of all, you know, they fought twenty years of war, you know, and picked themselves up from there. We didn't. We haven't fought war in forty years, but this place is at war with itself. The leaders are at war against the, the people. people. The people are against their the war people. against themselves, <laughs> and the people refuse to be at war against the leaders, which is I the mean, way it should be. Who is going to ask our leaders when are going to seventy almost seventy percent of this country is still foreign owned? Yes. Yeah. We Nigerians were scraping for thirty percent of our own country. Why? Why is that? Why? Why is that? Why should we be scraping for thirty percent? What's going on? Why should Nigeria be seventy percent foreign owned? So yeah, this, uh, thank you so much. No, uh, it's my pleasure. Viewers, my pleasure. we've been having a show on Kuti. You can't have enough of this guy, man. I like to have you back as frequently as possible. Yes, always. Well, and you know, one, I, one of these days. I'm always ready to serve. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to be in our government? Like, which ministerial position would you? No, no, no. As, I, as I've always told you, my interest is to be the chairman of your political party or my political party yes. when the time is right. Yeah. And also, young people, you know, as I said, be dynamic. Even Chore needs good competition. Absolutely. Create things that would drive ideas. If you think it's not good enough, then build, 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 build the alternative. What I've always told people. We want to see. Because there, be? there's a lot of questions all the time. Why didn't you start from look at them? Why are you not chairman? Go Why there. Go and say the party is there. Exactly. Go, go there. If that's what you can handle. Let's do this. At. The one I want to do is president. <laughs> he has picked his, he has picked he has picked his position. position. <laughs> you know, the one that you feel like senator is the one you love, go and be senator. You Me, know? I've never had the interest to rule men. Yeah, so. You know, my interest has always been party politics really at the core to create a dynamic you know political party that would lead uh, the majority of the most populous black nation in the world yes it's a big ta it's, it's a, a big a task freedom. because yes. it is in that party that you know me i believe that you know a good political party politicizes the people yes you know because when the people are because when a good political party politicizes the people, what does that mean it means the party wants to be a good government yes because when people are politicized, yes. every decision the government makes must be popular. Well, yes, exactly. First and foremost. Exactly. Yeah. So government if your decision is, is not popular, 
then you are the people we know. know yeah. So those are Nigerian government and like you. Fight, they don't fight. want to politicize you. Yeah. They don't want you to know. just show, 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 show reactionary mm -hmm. way. You know, so you are not politicized yeah. enough. Yeah. So they can make unpopular decisions and you don't know what is happening. So that's why I mean, I'm, I'm, I really enjoy party party politics. This is my goal. This is what I really want to do. You know, well, Saturday is our party convention. I know. I'm going to invite you because I'm sure people would like to see you. Even if you just come and you know. I'll be there. I've always been at all your yeah, events. I, I, I appreciate that. You know? And uh, you are free to come and contest as chairman of the party as well. We'll be open. Uh, we'll the only thing is that you say you don't have time. This is. Now, see, the thing is this. I still have to work so much out of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying as much as possible to stay true to my own calling, not compromise for yeah. anything. And, you know, see how I can be the best as I, I can be for me and my family. Yes. You know, so I have to work. You know, working work is important. So, but I still want to do duty. Yeah. When I'm home, dedicate myself. But with time, I'm gonna we're gonna keep, shed. We'll be on your case. I'm gonna okay. shed. I'm gonna shed the toga of touring. Mm -hmm. I'll be more on ground, and at that time, I'll really launch my political ambitions. Yes, yeah. fantastic. Thank you so much. One thing we do here is we fundraise because we don't have big men. <laughs> you know, is it possible that you can give us some money from the tour you just came back from? I want to believe you're going to be a honest president. I am. Eh? Because the way things are, you know, you should be sending some money to my account. <laughs> Look at what this guy is saying now. You know, you're one of the richest men on your age group in <laughs> West Africa. Group? West Africa. Where did you get outside that? of oil and gas? <laughs> Do you would have more money than Shwole in West Africa? I <laughs> oil and gas. That is his age mate. Let me tell you people the this, truth. This guy's sense of humor. Man. <laughs> <laughs> He's not like Obama that was poor when wow. he became president. Uh -huh. Yes, this is. Uh, no, I, I that's why I support him because I know they cannot. You can't bribe him. Yeah, is uh, <laughs> I I wish I had money. If I had money, man, this place would be on fire by now. No, but you know, you, you have money. You have money more than me, at least. Is me? Of, me and the one that doesn't have money. What do you do with your money? Man? This guy makes a lot of money. <laughs> I one day. I used to do advert of Sarah. <laughs> when I, I when I, I do, I just always miss advert upon advert. So I use all know, my I'm money. Always I'm like, working for this man. You know, it's time for him to give back. Now he's telling me that I'm poor. I'm rich. You know how do we poor people hate ourselves like this? I don't know. I don't know. Please contribute to us. Even if that small thing donates to our party. I will. I will. I definitely okay. will. So, hey, viewers, you always are also because you come to my show. Yes, I do. But I, you don't I, play gift. No, I do. You don't play. I'm you're always on the guest one. list. I'm only one. You're, you're always going to one of the show. You are always on the I guest said list. I said I want to see you at the back. So they now put me on the guest list. But I brought in nothing less than ten people that I pay. For. I always pay for. You. I love. I love. You. I love to support you, man. You know how it is. It's even true. even within the family, they say that I'm biased for you. <laughs> you know, we don't want to talk about that here. Uh, yes, it's yes, it's true. It's yes, true. it's like oh, you know, she but we, we're also she... like you know, yes. we have a special friendship, yes, like I... Bush and Blair. Yes. <laughs> no, don't mention those people on my show. You know, Bush. No, and... I just say like their <laughs> friendship. It's not like we are them. We just have like their friendship. Yes. Anyway, so <laughs> you know, it's been uh, amazing, and uh, you know, I would love to keep bringing you back, even uh, yeah, anytime, uh, anytime. Uh, you know, I, you know, it's, it's 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 very it's a lot because a lot of people are watching and listening to you, and I like to I like to see it when we can project into the future by way of this conversation. But one of the things that needs to happen Nigeria, is to change the team as well. Yes, of the course. people who are running the conversation <laughs> because even the the analysts, yeah, man, and the people who are there are thinking that all these people. Are, by the time they see that the team has changed completely, you know, <laughs> they're like, "Wow, we have to also change our tactics." And these ones are speaking the real the language. Language, exactly. And what is it that they want to tell you? Western education, you have been there. You understand? What do you want to tell you? Uh -huh. You have you have blown saxophone to the extent that you know. All you have more than one airway all over. You, know, <laughs> you have read all their books and tactics, you have the exposure. You know, all of us have done it, we've been there, seen it, and come back to our country and come to the conclusion. One of the things that is driving the way people watch and listen to these ideas is that a lot of our people are like, chased out of here, have been chasing what they call the green pasture. The and American dream. that they have become fertilizer for the pasture. You know, and everybody wants to come back. There's no American dream. I tell people, 
you can only have a dream if you can sleep. The moment you walk into <laughs> America, you are not going to sleep again <laughs> until you leave. You know, there's a description I give to America. America is like a fried pan. The immigrants there, they're like dodo. <laughs> so you know how like if they want to fry you inside a fry pan, you know, they will look at the dodo, they cut you to pieces cut and then they start to running you around. And you know that dodo that is where you are spoiled or you are born, they'll put you on the pan handle. Mm. <laughs> you know, pan handle. <laughs> you know, and what is pan handle? That's Florida. That's where you put all the people that have been condemned by because America will overwork you. They will over indulge you, you know. You come and I can give you credit, come and have a car. You know, then you discover that when you are looking at when you are buying a car, it's like, ah, it should be only three hundred dollars, you know, every month to pay in five years. Look at five years, not calculate. That five years, the man will just call you and say, No, you are still owing us another ten thousand dollars. Like, but why did I buy a car from you and you didn't tell me the truth? Because the system is not meant to tell you the truth. You can't have house that you cannot afford, you have to go back, back in thirty years. That 30 years, they know you are not going to live for 30 years because the system has already... By the time you are 30 years, they have replaced your knees, ankles, you know. <laughs> and for your co- children for closure looking, is coming. Yes, for closure is coming. The banks are after you. Your children are looking for ways to move you to an old people's home, you know, where you are practically in detention because you can't live even if you are well. So, except your family come, come and visit get you. So, but in Africa, man, this is beautiful. You wake up, it's sunshine. In America, you are depressed for six months because of cold weather. You can't even move. And a lot of things are just not for us. We are not... De- we, you can't, there's no American dream. I keep telling you, the way to understand American dream is to walk into America and look at what is happening to Americans themselves. That's what so, people don't see. So, but don't people just say that you think that, that they are lazy. don't show that on... Yes, because you don't see that on CNN. You don't see that on MTV. They always showing you the brighter side of life. They don't know that when those girls finish dancing, they have to take off their clothes and go and you know, sometimes go and pay their mortgage. They can't afford it. They have to go back again and dance. You know, when you see an American musician that is like saying, hey, you know, you see gold. And and then one day you discover when it's going through foreclosure, it tells you that that gold in a panda is just a take and show off, you know. So people have, but it takes a level of intellectual deepness and understanding to know that life is not about playing. That life is substance if you live where you are comfortable and where it's habitable for you. And America is neither here nor there. I've seen it 19 years out there. And I've said to myself, the best place to be is home. You just have to rescue this motherland and make Africa work for the rest of us. And it's not only happening in Africa, in Nigeria. There's a guy in Uganda, a musician, Bobby Wine. Yeah. Who is tearing things up. You have in South Africa, uh, Julius Malema, uh, you know, but we need to be the one leading the charge because this is where, this is the origin, you know, like I described Nigeria, I mean, Africa is a gun that's facing down and Nigeria is a trigger here and that gun is loaded, but until Nigeria fires, Africa is screwed. Yeah, this is the most populous nation, we need to get it together. Yeah. And we really, you know, we really, in many instances, we're always the ones like actually not pulling our weight. Yeah, you know, we need to get ready, man. It's really young people here, yeah. old people too. Everybody, everybody, because everybody, old people need to live a better life too. Yeah, yeah. everybody. I don't and know why they were young, young people. I used to this. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. I mean, everybody. What is what is young people? I tell old people, young people is social security for old people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because if you are old and your kids are useless, you are going to die of hunger faster than. But if your kids are doing well. They will bring you money, clothes. But you're not even the responsibility of your children. If your if, if your country is doing well, yeah, the state should be able to give you a dignified old age it, it, with your pension, it, it, yes. the care you need. Your, your I mean, yeah, that's that's there. But culturally too, I'm just, we take yeah. care of our parents. You know, so if you are an old person and you have screwed up your country, and you are not wondering why, you know, you are, they are not paying your pension. It's because you, you have, didn't provide the opportunity for the younger you ones to your contribute duty. <laughs> to the, the pension your, that would no, have been no. paid. I had a discussion with some of them, my pension, you know, some people were discussing you know, some pension issues with some older comrades. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The pension issue that old people experience in this country is their karma for not engaging the system yes. when they were young. 
No, it's true. It's not a. It's not a joke. I'm. I'm not. It's. It's not a joke. That's what you suffer. If they are taking on the system seriously. If you are not being say fella was crazy that time, mm -hmm. you will know you will be collecting your pension today yeah. easily. Normally. Because that was what day. fella was saying. <laughs> say, don't let them steal your pension. <laughs> yeah, I beg. Yes, you know, this man, they talk. Yeah, they I'm a bush. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That's what is going on. It's crazy. Man. So you know you report you so you know. Yeah. Now people that are not as old as you are stealing money that you have worked for all your life. Mm -hmm. You know, young people, exactly. Some yeah. of the people still yeah. pension money are very young. young. Yes, uh -uh. this pension manager, they've never even worked five years in civil service. Wow, <laughs> like one of my friends, like to say, <laughs> <laughs> my comrades comrade, say, Akataka. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, so, so it's 10 o'clock and uh, 10 17 actually. So, for those of you watching and those who have been glued to uh you know program tonight you just have to understand that nobody will do it for you except you do it for yourself everybody else whether you are in spain or uh you are in italy uh you are in america europe japan whatever drove you out of this country let it drive you back to streets yes so that we can come and rescue the country and no, we can believe I, I, it wasn't an idea i was going to give to you that you have to make the clarion call to all pan-africanists all over the world yes not only nigerians but all pan-africanists to come and join your team here yes you know you need to make the clarion call that the most popular black nation you know is about to be liberated yes this is not just a nigerian effort no, no it's true the situation of nigeria is important to all black people, people. all motherland people no, no, all just, over just to add quickly one of our policies is that everybody whose dna reveals that they're from nigeria would enter this country visa free as soon as we're sworn in yes every person they, I, I don't see any reason why nigeria should be asking black people for visa <laughs> you know no we are set i think we're still a it's, colonial country yes. i tell you that this is why the police still shoot us because it's still the colonial training this is how we can't feed ourselves it's still because the the crop planning of the colonial masters is still how we grow food in nigeria yes. and the colonial masters never uh, plant the crops in nigeria to feed nigerian people they pro they did plant the land to export the goods that they could grow there and yeah. that's the same system we are using we've not you know imagined a new system yeah. which we have to do to feed ourselves don't let that man run away because yeah. we want to introduce you on our show that's a friend that just came from america let's keep Come on, show. Show. <laughs> we are done abby yes we're done thank you so much show this, is, this is a link <laughs> nice to meet you <laughs>